What is up everyone and welcome back to another death battle reaction. The last one was pretty epic. We had some Deadpool kicking some ass and today I am here reacting to... <sighs> Brace yourself, Leon Kennedy versus Frank West. Good old Resident Evil versus Dead Rising. Now, Dead Rising was a pretty awesome game and I gotta go ahead and say that honestly... I think it should be more popular. Now let's be honest here, Resident Evil is one of like the biggest franchises in the entire world when it comes to horror, but I feel like Dead Rising, it's just nowhere near as popular, but it should be. Now the funniest part of that being that I've never actually completed a Dead Rising game in my life, but I have played snippets of every single one of them, and I used to watch the Rad Brad play Dead Rising way, way back in the day when that was his thing. So in regards to this, pretty cool, both very important characters, Leon and Frank. Ah, uh, the thing with Frank is that he's an ordinary guy, but he's very talented. Obviously he makes a lot of very good weapons in order for you to kill the zombies in very cool ways. And Leon, Leon's got like these specialist skills and he's very good with his guns and the knife and kicking and Resi 4 and things like that. So when it comes to the two of them fighting, hmm, I think, I think Frank's gonna win this one actually based on skills. I know that that might be... Oh, I don't know. It's like, it's a close one between the two, but I'm going to go with Frank. Definitely going to go with Frank based on skills, but I prefer Leon just between the two characters. Although I do really like Frank's cockiness. I feel like me and him would get on like a house on fire. So I'm going to go ahead and say, Frank, who do you think will win between Leon versus Frank? Let's go ahead and watch this. Surviving the undead apocalypse takes grit, perseverance, and an army's worth of firepower. With all that and some luck, these two became experts in zombie fighting. Leon Kennedy, the top cop and government agent in Resident Evil. And Frank West, the backyard wrestling MacGyver of Dead Rising. He's whiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Oh! That's odd how they've done As a that. child, Leon Scott Kennedy's father instilled in him a strong sense of justice. Following in his footsteps, Leon joined the police force, determined to uncover the darkest riddles and uphold the law. So for his first ever assignment, he took the biggest challenge he could find. Instead of picking an easy job like dishing out dastardly parking tickets, he was off to Raccoon City to investigate a bunch of mysterious murders. His instincts were good, perhaps too good. Officer Kennedy wound up choosing the most challenging and dangerous assignment he possibly could have. Yeah, it turns out Trash Panda Town was due for a big ol' zombie outbreak, <laughs> and Leon got stuck in the middle. How's that for hazing the rookie? He wasn't a rookie for long. After fending off the zombie threat and even taking a bullet from the grassy knoll, Leon was recruited by the American government as a special agent, bodyguard, and their go-to specialist for apocalyptic events. In all cases, the people that are bitten become infected themselves and go on to attack others. The only way to stop the spread of infection is to destroy the infectees' brains. Shoot them in the head. His training at the police movie. academy turned him into a pretty tough guy. But as a special agent, he became unstoppable. All thanks to his extensive firearms training, extreme driving tests, and the study of tactical response scenarios. Guess what martial art they teach American Secret Service members? A traitorous Russian one called Sistema, and Leon is an expert at it. Sistema is a free-form martial art focusing on disabling targets via pressure points and joints. While not specifically lethal on its own, Sistema also involves quite a lot of training with knives and firearms. That's good, because I don't think fists would be enough to take on monsters like the tyrants, skinless dogs, and... Is that Gene Simmons? <laughs> right, these bio-organic weapons, or B.O.W.s, were far tougher than your ordinary run-of-the-mill zombie. Thankfully, Leon has the weaponry to take them on. He's efficient with just about any kind of gun, but like me, he loves carrying around his favorites, including the Silver Ghost, a unique pistol specifically designed for him. He's also got a modified 50 caliber Desert Eagle Magnum, a gift from his father. 
Lucky bastard. All I ever got from my dad was a sore cheek. While he has no problem dual-wielding handguns, Leon is extremely proficient in dealing damage with heavier weapons, such as the M203 grenade launcher or his ludicrous rocket launcher special. This red-tipped wrecker of an RPG is far more powerful than an ordinary propelled grenade. The gun itself looks similar to a classic RPG-7 model, first used as an anti-tank weapon by the Soviet Union. Since the red grenade is so deadly, it's probably a thermobaric explosive booster, which can launch over 600 feet for a 60-foot wide explosion. That's more than enough to take down one of those Bow Wows. Leon has plenty of experience with hand grenades, rifles, flamethrowers, etc., but one weapon stands above them all, his knife. Oh yeah, Leon's combat knife is way more than some plain old red cutter. He's practically magic when it comes to his skill with a knife. And if he gets hit, he'll be fine. Probably. I mean, he's wearing lightweight level 3 tactical body armor, which can stop bullets from a magnum and even some rifles. If he does take a hit, he's carrying some healing herbs, which he can also take a hit from, if you know what I'm saying. He's not <laughs> snorting drugs, Boomstick. Healing herbs have a history of being applied as an aerosol spray or ground up within paper. Well, once Leon became the government's numero uno answer to all their zombie problems, he was stopping outbreaks all over the world. He had to pull off some awesome feats to do it. He even had to make some horrible sacrifices along the way. Like that poor, poor Ducati. Leon is strong enough to crush a skull or even force open the jaws of a giant infected shark. The shark appears to be similar in size to a great white, which has a bite strength of nearly two tons of force. That shit's crazy! And speaking of which, let's talk a little bit about Leon's relationship with boulders. Relationship with what? Boulders! You know, they're like really big rocks. I think you would know that. Well, he fought Chris Redfield to a standstill, the famous boulder puncher himself. <laughs> and while Leon doesn't seem to have Chris's brute strength, he did push over this giant rock with a little help. Leon is pretty quick too. He's dodged bullets, a moving laser grid, and even outraced this tyrant, which, according to the Inside of Biohazard Guide, could run up to 43 miles per hour. He's even thrown his trusty knife fast enough that this creepy guy didn't even react until, uh... Oh. The average time for a person to perceive and react to movement is a quarter of a second. Leon appears to be about 30 feet away from his target Salazar here, meaning he threw his knife around 80 miles per hour. Uh. The average speed for most world-class knife throwers is only 35 miles per hour, so he's more than double that. Oh, uh, I was getting anxiety watching that. Leon is tough, having survived blows from various large and burly BOWs. He even matched the strength of Umbrella Agent Jack Krauser. Krauser was strong enough to perform a 30-foot vertical jump. Generally, men can pull off a 2-foot vertical jump at most, making Krauser potentially 15 times stronger than the average man. At this point, let's just say that Leon is basically superhuman. It's like he has zero weaknesses. Oh, contraire, Boomstick, Leon has his fair share of baggage. He's pretty gullible, oftentimes tricked by those wilier than himself. Go. Save yourself. Is it just me, or does everybody always ignore what I say? Like her? You think he just might be trying to get laid? Lord knows I've done a few dumb things on that quest. I don't know about his chances, though, rocking that hairdo. But after more than 15 years of nightmarish catastrophes, Leon's mental state has become more fragile and more reliant on alcohol. Ah, you and me both, pal. He always needs a little chaos in his life, and when it comes down to it, that's what makes him such a friggin' badass. Better try a new trick, cause that one's getting old. I love Leon, he is such an Upon amazing character. Upon first impression, Frankwest seems to just be your average journalist, but he's far more than that. I'll say, he's covered wars, you know. As a photojournalist, Frank will regularly go far beyond the call of duty to uncover his next big scoop. It was this ironclad determination which led him to a mall in the town of Willamette, Colorado, where he found the zombie apocalypse. What? Did you just say zombies? But Frank's down to rough up dozens of zombies every now and then. And with his wrestling history and battlefield experience, he's got the skills to do it. Despite never having fired a gun at another person before Willamette, Frank discovered he's a natural when it comes to firearms. 
He's handy with all sorts of guns, like pistols, shotguns, machine guns, and a beautiful minigun. Oh, I love it. He's even got a Silver Ghost, a unique pistol specifically designed for government agent Leon G- Hey, wait a minute. But bullets can only last so long against a never-ending zombie horde, so Frank was forced to improvise. And thanks to being in a shopping mall, he had plenty of options. From obvious choices like sledgehammers, baseball bats, and chainsaws, to out-of-the-box picks like shampoo, lipstick, lawnmowers, and a shopping cart, Frank has an uncanny ability to effectively weaponize <laughs> pretty much anything he gets his hands on. Garbage, <laughs> toys, food, you name it, this guy does not overlook anything's death-dealing potential. He even uses his camera flash as a weapon. His primary camera appears to be a Nikon D100, which has a flash color temperature of 6000K, or crystal white. When used up close, it's nearly as effective on the eyes as a flashbang grenade. Anyway, Frank survived the zombie horde with flying colors. His next step was obvious. Profit from it! He became famous overnight. He was named the Hero of Willamette, hosted a TV show, and scored all sorts of endorsements. His love of using baseball bats to smash zombie skulls in even landed him a great commercial deal with Deadwood Pro Baseball. Damn, so he's making tons of money off of killing people. My dream. I know, right? All these zombies were technically people once, so when you really think about it, this whole situation is pretty freaking awesome! Oh, <laughs> live in the dream, buddy. Nice you earned it. Uh-huh. Anyway, fame is a fickle mistress, and it wasn't long until Frank's 15 minutes of fame were cut short. He eventually became a college teacher, but not before several more encounters with the undead kind. And the more he fought him, the more creative he got about it. Frank's greatest asset is his impressive ingenuity. With nothing but his blood, sweat, and tears, and a shitload of duct tape, Frank perfected the art of I combination love that weapons. game. I love like it. Like the paddle saw, where he took a kayak paddle and strapped on a couple chainsaws <laughs> for a rip-roaring good time. <laughs> the electric crusher is an invention combining the power of a car battery with the weight of a sledgehammer, crafting a Mjolnir for mortals. The Blitzkrieg is a freaking wheelchair powered by a car battery firing machine guns all over the place. What? Stephen Hawking could have even beat death with that. He can make a laser sword by sticking a gem into a flashlight. Don't ask me how. And the Reaper is the unholy union of sickle and samurai sword. Wow, and all that is just scratching the surface. He's even got combo vehicles like the exosuit. That's a suit made of slurping machines. Which shoots ice tornadoes? Talk about cool, pun intended. Even stranger, <laughs> Frank has used an arcade machine to miraculously copy some of the powers of fellow Capcom Dante. characters. You're a wizard, Frankie. No, he's not magic. These powers come directly from costumes most commonly obtained from the machine. For example, he can don Ryu's ki to perform hurricane kicks, or Mega Man X's armor complete with a Mega Buster. You are what you wear. Speaking of costume changes, sadly Frank eventually was caught by zombies and wound up becoming another mindless slave of the undead horde. But it's okay, he got better. Frank has pulled off a lot of impressive feats. Despite having little formal training aside from maybe a three-day combat journalist crash course, he's killed hundreds, maybe thousands of zombies, giving him one of the highest body counts in video game history. He's really strong, too. He can pull a zombie's limbs and head off no problem. And in the exosuit, he's pushed around a two-ton car. He's tough enough to survive long falls and devastating helicopter crashes with little issues. And he's quick enough to catch up to and board a train moving 15 miles per hour in less than three seconds. He can even hop off zombies' heads like a ninja so well that the zombies barely even notice. <laughs> Wait, they don't notice that he's literally jumping off their heads? How the hell does he pull that off? <laughs> Very careful. But Frank has fought more than just mindless zombies. Yeah, like some crazy clowns with chainsaws and a freeze gun, and plenty of other psychomaniacs. This is my stuff! Including Lance Corporal Calder, the world's first intelligent soldier zombie. Also, I think it's important to note many of these feats were performed in a span of 72 hours with no sleep or rest. According to a study on sleep deprivation in 2010, an average human's physical and mental health begins to severely deteriorate after 36 hours of no sleep, resulting in disorientation and even hallucinations. Here I thought heavy drinking was the only way to legally hallucinate. Well, <laughs> time to binge Netflix until I trip balls! Whether by inhuman stamina or just a shit ton of adrenaline, Frank was in peak condition for twice as long as he should have been. 
there's that journalist determination again. Sure, he may be a bit of a self-serving asshole, but he's pulled off the impossible more than once, even when he got into his 50s. Once a survivor, always a survivor. Snag your very own disposable <gasps> digi Jeep disposable camera. It's fantastic. I mean it. Seriously. I need a raise. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be so interesting. All right, the combatants are set. Let's send this debate once and for all. But first, let me tell you about how you can be the MacGyver of the kitchen. With the evacuation complete, state officials are prioritizing- Oh, this is really interesting. Are the way they've done it. The city. Who knows what these it's like Mega Man style. No, it's not. It's like older than that. Sweet. I don't know. Just what I was looking for. What are you doing? No one's supposed to be here. Never stopped me before, pal. This is so weird! <laughs> oh, lost your gun, Leon. Uh-oh. See you in a flash, buddy. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's where Frank will excel. You know. He's been up for days, Leon. Uh-oh. That's nice, buddy. God, the rocket launcher. The rocket launcher. <laughs> it was ice fighting with you, buddy. Oh! Game over. Coming back from the dead this time. No way! Frank's strategies and endlessly creative arsenal certainly put up a good fight, but in the end, Leon just had him beat in nearly every other category. <laughs> Frank was one tough cookie, but Leon's superhuman abilities were just more impressive. Frank's pushed the two-ton car, right? Yes, which is similar to Leon holding back the shark's two-ton biting force, but his boulder feat was much more impressive. <laughs> By comparing the boulder's size to Leon, it appears to have weighed around nine tons at minimum. While Leon did have help pushing it, even half of nine tons is much heavier than anything Frank's lifted or pushed. 
Leon and Frank seemed equally tough, but Leon was definitely quicker. Bullet timing, laser dodging, and hell, Leon's speed and precision with his knife on its own is more impressive than any speed feat Frank's got. But in the end, the most important question was whether or not Leon could cope with Frank's insane weaponry and unpredictable creativity. But Leon's seen plenty of crazy shit in his career, and fought lots of surprising and off-putting monsters. His years of formal training and more consistent combat records certainly lent him the experience needed to win. He's survived numerous battles with enemies powerful enough to one-shot him, and he's shown plenty of creative strategy and critical thinking mid-fight. Like when he fought Tyrant Glenn, using momentum from his own injuries and throwing a freaking motorcycle through the air. Leon was just too fast, too strong, too experienced, and too badass. He was frankly on his game. The winner is Leon Kennedy. All right, all right. Okay, it makes sense that Leon took that one. I just, there was part of me that thought Leon has it easily, but then I was like, but there's a lot of things that Frank can do. So I didn't want it to just be like, oh, it's so easy that Leon has it. So it makes sense. I mean, Leon, let's be honest, he is one of the most badass characters in the Resident Evil franchise after Chris, because Chris is my favorite. Let me know who your favorite Resident Evil character is in the comment section. I bet it's all gonna be Chris. Nah, I'm joking. It probably won't be. So are you happy with the results? Are you happy that bad boy Leon managed to beat Frank? And as we say, I guess it makes sense. Please leave your recommendations for the next death battle that I should react to in the comment section, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.